All right, here we are, week nine of the NFL season. It's now over. We made it, and wow, I said week nine. I meant to say week eight. My bad. My bad, y'all. My bad. But yeah, week eight is over, and we learned some interesting stuff this week. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what. Um, the Falcons, they didn't blow a lead. Shocking, right? Shocking. They didn't blow a lead. They beat the Carolina Panthers. They have their second win of the season. You know who also has their second win of the season? Thanks to Dalvin Cook's four touchdowns, the Minnesota Vikings. They did great against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, despite the fact that Devontae Adams had three touchdowns. Despite, despite that, and despite the fact that Aaron Rodgers still could have thrown a Hail Mary to end the game and beat the Vikings. None of that. None of that today. None of that. Um, Chiefs, I mean, they, they easily beat the Jets. I mean, Mahomes had five touchdowns. Come on now. This is the Jets we're talking about here. This this team might be worse than the 08 Lions. I'm not going to lie to you. They're just that bad. They're really bad. Colts beat up on the Lions. So we thought the Lions were going to do something. They didn't really do anything. They didn't really prove anything. You know, Phillip Rivers was throwing touchdowns instead of interceptions, which was crazy. Crazy surprising to me. Titans. What happened, y'all? Uh, what happened? What happened, Titans? What happened? You guys kind of just lost two straight games. You guys need to pick it up. You paid you paid guys like Jadavion Clowney and Big Beasley, and they haven't done anything. Right? Is Big Beasley on the, on the Titans? I don't know. I would have forgot already. But Jadavion Clowney hasn't done anything that I know of because he, he's, on, he's on the Titans. Has done absolutely anything. Nothing at all. Cam Newton, uh, I gotta feel sorry for you, bro. You know, you you know, you have regressed, my man. I, you probably should have hung up, you know, the football shoes a couple years ago. You know, you know, because I mean, you those injuries were really, really bad that you had, and you're playing like trash now. Fumble at the end of the game against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills take a commanding lead in the AFC East. Uh, speaking of the AFC East, one more team we got to get the way. Tua time. It's Tua time. But it wasn't even about Tua. Yeah, Tua made a mistake with his first play of the game, getting strip sacked by Aaron Donald. But um, the Dolphins came to play. Special teams, defense, scoring touchdowns. Tua throws his first touchdown. You know, players on the defense, like Van Dinkle or Van Dinkle or however you say his name. You know, and Kyle Van Noy making plays on the defense. And, and, and you know, Ogba can get to Jared Goff. Jared Goff played like trash. He played like the Jared Goff of like what, a couple of years ago where he was just playing awful. Just playing bad. You know? So, um, yeah, yeah, something is going on out there, you know, in Rams country, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you guys gotta get it together, you gotta get it together out there, you gotta get it together. In a windy game, wind storms, all it took was one Hunter Renfro touchdown, really, to keep the Raiders in victory, you know, in victory mode. You know, they beat the Browns 16-6. to The Browns have lost a couple, you know, back-to-back, you know, last, uh, what, the last three or four games they've lost. Not looking too pretty right now, Browns fans. Not looking too pretty. You're still in a comfortable position, but, hey, you could be falling lower on it's as far as seating goes. You could be falling a little bit lower. But we'll find that out soon, you know. We'll find it out. I'll tell you that much. So, how many times are the Chargers going to blow leads? How many times are they going to blow leads? Because this is like the fifth, fourth or fifth time this season that they've blown a lead. They had a 21-point lead against Drew Locke, of all people. 
And the Browns came, I mean, the Broncos came back and beat them 31 30. You can't do that. You can't blow leads. You can't do that. Anthony Lynn, get it together. Guys, you got to get it together. You got to get it together. Chargers, you got to get it together out there. You you got to you got to you guys got to they got they got to do something to get wins. Very sorry about that noise in the background, man. That was my niece and nephew. Um anyway, got to get, get they got to get it together. They have to get some discipline out there. Defense cannot keep blowing it because it's been the defense that has blown it. You don't, you don't do that. You know, you play dominant. You know, you you keep Tom Brady and stuff like that down, and, and you know you still blew the lead anyway. Like the Bucks, you still blew the lead. The Patrick Mahomes and the Super Bowl, you know, champs. You know, you just you guys gotta get get it together. This is this is embarrassing. You know. The Chargers should have like five or six wins right now. Justin Herbert has been looking pretty dang good. He hasn't looked like, you know, a rookie, to, to be completely honest, you know, for most of the season. But it's just the Chargers, all they know is pain. All they know is pain. You know, if Devon Williams keeps fighting people, I don't think I'm going to be watching the Bears very long. But anyway... The Bears shouldn't even really have been in this game, to be completely honest. They looked bad, looked rough out there, and the Saints did not want to take the game. They, they wanted to win it at overtime. They could not take the game in regulation. That's my takeaway from the Saints-Bears, aside from that fight that happened. You know, you know Janoris Jenkins came up in there late, tried to get whims in a, uh, you know, some type of full Nelson type of maneuver. It didn't really matter. Saints beat the Bears. Don't think I'm going to be watching the Bears next week. They've lost a couple straight. You know, their offense does not look good. I mean, the Saints' offense didn't look too great either. But, I mean, the Saints have, you know, they have, you know, just as many wins as the Bears do now. And both these teams, you know, they're looking like they're going some places, you know, in the future. We can all, because, I mean, it's only halfway through the season, but. Looking like they're going some places. Saints are still kind of steady. They 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 really did not impress me yesterday. They really didn't. In the other game that was supposed to be big, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo got injured again. You know, George Kittle also injured again. And Russell Wilson threw four touchdowns for the Seahawks. Man, is He's one of the MVP. I just say it right now. He's one of the MVP. I mean, DK Metcalf caught two touchdowns. Man's can run. Can't and nobody could cover him. You know, the score is a lot closer than this than you know the game really indicated. Because I mean Seahawks were just dominant in this game. They really flexed their offensive might. They really have something good out there. You know, in Seattle, all it's always been good out there in Seattle. They're 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 pretty damn good. The Seahawks are pretty damn good. Um, Bucks Giants. Apparently, there was a big penalty late in the game. You know, I didn't watch this game by the way, but there was a big penalty late. But it doesn't really matter. You know, the Bucks do beat the Giants. Even though the Bucks kind of struggled, but they beat the Giants by two points. Maybe it should have went to overtime. Maybe not. But I don't care because it's the Giants. So, And plus, it was a Monday Night Football game. So, you know I don't care. <sighs> Which leaves the worst for last. You know, we talked about the Giants already. Don't really hear. Daniel Jones played pretty interesting. You know, he played a pretty interesting game. You know, last night. Let's talk about Sunday night because, I mean, it, it was bad. It was really bad. How many turnovers did Carson Wentz have? Four. Four turnovers. How do you get outplayed by a seventh rounder? 
rookie quarterback named Ben DiNucci. I know Ben DiNucci from James Madison because I watched the um, the FCS National Championship last year. Or rather, it was actually this year, you know, the 2020 National Championship back in January. I, I made a video on that, by the way. Made a video on the National Championship, by the way. So, But, honestly, 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 aside from the two touchdowns, you know, the Eagles had in this game. You know, that like Carson went, you know, through. You know, the Cowboys were really about to win this game. I'm just going to say that right now. With trick plays that didn't work and, and Ben DiNucci side-arming and, and doing all sorts of weird nonsense on the field. Honestly, DiNucci didn't even play that horrifically. He didn't play that horrifically. He made some bad throws. He did, you know, he did fumble a couple times, though. But that was on the offensive line, man. You cannot... I cannot state it enough how bad the offensive line is. It is rough out there. Yeah, you know, we got Zach Martin back. But, I mean, come on. Offensive line is still rough. Defense played a, a damn good game. It was only, you know, a fumble that really wasn't clearly recovered. And the refs, you know, just, were just like, okay, let's get this over with. Let's get this game over with. Let's go home. And, you know, gave the Eagles a touchdown that shouldn't have been a touchdown. You know, the Cowboys were driving down the field late, could have tied this game up, maybe take the lead, and maybe would have had to force Carson Wentz to try and do something. Uh, I would have rather loved to see that than, than this result that we have. Instead of, you know, like maybe like, I don't know, like 22 to 15, uh, let's just say, or 16 15 Cowboys, or, you know, 22-16 Eagles, you know, something would have been more interesting. I would have been way more, you know, happy with a score like that. But instead, 23-9, to not the score we really wanted. We still have a chance because the Eagles are only up by one game. You know, they're 3-4-1 and four and one now, and we're 2-6. and six. Just not a good look. Not a good look for the NFC East at all. And, I mean, it was a total travesty out there. I mean, somehow the Cowboys' defense played it pretty interesting, but they just they, they just didn't have enough to stop Carson Wentz from scoring two touchdowns, though. They didn't have enough of that. But it didn't really matter, though, because I really think Danucci played better than Wentz. That's just the reality of the situation. So, there's that. So, yeah, Week 8, Steelers. Ravens, don't think I forgot about that game because I didn't because Lamar Jackson threw two picks, including a pick six for the first time. The real big game of the day. <laughs> you thought I forgot. The real big game of the day. Um, I mean, come on. Steelers, their defense, you know, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't look too, you know, they didn't look too great because, you know, you know, the I mean, the defense, you know, they got the pick six, and then they let Lamar Jackson and the company score 17 on them. And then the offense decided to wake up in the second half as well. You know, they decided to finally wake up and start playing football in the second half. You can't do that. You can't, you can't play like that. You know, Steelers may be undefeated because of Lamar Jackson turned it over like nine times. But... Steelers' offense has always been, you know, kind of, you know, I mean, the Steelers don't really look like a 7-0 team, to be completely honest with you. They don't look like it, but they are, you know, because they've had bouts like this where they won't play very well, you know, throughout most of the game and wake up very late. I don't think you could do that, you know, when you play, you know, you know let's say the Chiefs come up in there. I don't know. I don't know, do the Steelers play the Chiefs? I don't think they play the Chiefs this season, um, unless it's the playoffs. But, you know, the Steelers have had bouts on offense where they just can't do anything. They play bad defense, same thing. You know, they give up a lot of points, and then they start, you know, you know, bending and not breaking late in the game. So, I mean, the Steelers, 
really don't look like the 7-0 team. In fact, they should have lost a couple games at least, but they haven't. And it's only because, you know, Lamar Jackson just did not look too good out there today. He did not look too good, but he still had his team in, in you know, in the driver's seat to win the game. You know, this is what I'm talking about. Steelers force, you know, four or five turnovers, and the Ravens still had a chance to win. They still had a chance to win, so that's why I don't think the Steelers are going to be undefeated for long, for much longer. Yeah, they have an easier slate in the next couple of weeks, but I don't think they're going to be undefeated for much longer. But yeah, week eight. What did we learn? What did we learn? What did we learn? We learned some interesting things. Let me tell you that. You know, we can't trust the Chargers, can't trust the Lions, can't trust the Falcons. The NFC is still a dumpster fire. And, you know, Seahawks are. Seahawks look pretty damn good. Steelers, maybe not so much, but they're still undefeated. And the Jets are the Jets. They're bad. Really, really bad. And the Bears, you know, also anemic on offense. But they, but when they get the job done, they get the job done. You know, but they didn't get the job done, you know, on Sunday because of dumb mistakes. So, yeah. That's week eight. See you tomorrow. Talk about week nine because it's going to be, you know, some pretty good stuff on there. Happy election day. Go vote. That's all I can tell you. Because I don't, I don't really have a leg in all of this to talk about politics. But go vote.